Hello, welcome to your lecture on dizziness. You know, dizziness can be just a really tough patient presentation. And, um, you know, I could talk about dizziness like a full day, and I, I know you don't want me to do that. So um, what we have to do when it comes to dizziness is we really have to try to listen to what the patient says and let them put it in their own words so that then we can maybe get it into a category to try to figure out what's going on. You know, dizziness may mean to a patient that they feel like that they're gonna faint. It may mean that when they change positions quickly that they get a little dizzy. Uh, it may be that when they're anxious, you know, they feel kind of dizzy. It can mean so many different things to different people. You know, lots of people say they had spells um, it could mean passing out. So just if you can, sit back and let the patient tell you first, you know, what they think dizziness is to them. And then we can maybe work it into a category. Because it is such a large diagnosis, the only way to really make this manageable is to try to get it into some different categories. So I'm going to try to keep the lecture as short as possible and as to the point as possible because with dizziness, um, it can just be extremely difficult. When it comes to epidemiology, dizziness accounts for about 5% of all primary care visits. But we can't really talk about pathophysiology when it comes to dizziness because it's not really a disease process. You know, it's a symptom and it tells us that something's going wrong somewhere. So we can usually, you know, classify it into one of four categories. It's either vertigo, it's disequilibrium, presyncope, or lightheadedness. Of dizziness. You know, it's just like what I said in the beginning. Let the patient describe the dizziness and see if some of these words kind of start coming out in their, their description. Um, if they can't give you any of these words, like I feel like I'm going to black out, or I feel like the room's spinning, or I feel like I'm spinning, or I feel like I may fall, I feel off balance. If none of those really kind of come out when they're trying to describe it, and it's just really vague, you know, kind of thing, then that's probably lightheadedness. And oftentimes that's, that's related to anxiety. So that's, you know, something to keep in the back of your mind and, and something that um, you have to think about. Now when they talk about the fact that they're spinning or the room's spinning or uh, weaving and those types of things, then it's they're talking most likely about vertigo and that's going to be about 50 percent of the time. If they feel off balance, feel like they may fall, feel unsteady, that's disequilibrium. And if they tell you they feel like they're going to black out, um, then that's presyncope. So just letting them talk and trying to get into your category is the best way to get started. Okay, when it comes to dizziness, I said it can be really difficult. This is probably the best that I've ever seen to kind of break it down. So, you know, let's talk about vertigo first. You want to ask about a history of migraines. Of course, if, if it's a new onset of migraines over the age of 50, then, you know, that's a workup because that's a red flag. Uh, the other thing that you want to ask about for sure is hearing loss. Um, and you can also test for this, of course, in the office. If yes to hearing loss and vertigo, if it's episodic, then it could be Meniere's. If it's ongoing, it could be other issues. You know, you have to worry about things like acoustic neuromas. So this is a referral. If there's no hearing loss and there's vertigo, then it could very likely be BPPV, which is uh, pretty benign and we can treat. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more. When it comes to dizziness, if it's disequilibrium, then you're going to think about gait. You're going to think about things that would cause a change in gait, like Parkinson's disease, 
um, diabetic neuropathy, vision changes. I mean, there are some things that have like a classic gait that goes with it, like Parkinson's disease. If it's presyncope, then lots of times we're thinking heart, we're thinking arrhythmias, we're thinking MI, orthostatic hypotension, and also hypoglycemia. So if they're on any type of medications. And that's one of the first things that I ask when someone comes in with dizziness is that I say, have you started any new medications in the last couple weeks? And then I cross my fingers that they say yes. <laughs> and then I know it's medication related, which is pretty easy to fix. Um, the other thing I would say about medications and uh, presyncope is with the orthostatic. You need to tell your patients that anything that you give them to help with blood pressure is going to make them a little bit dizzy. And if you forget to do that, then what's going to happen is that they're going to come back in and see you in a couple of weeks. And you say, how is your medication going? And they're saying, well, I couldn't take that medication. And say, what happened? Well, it made me dizzy. Well, when did it make you dizzy? Well, it made me dizzy when I was sitting down and I stood up quickly. So if you don't do your teaching ahead of time, then the patient's going to have that kind of experience. And most likely, they're going to DC their medication. Now, you know that some cardiac medications like your alpha blockers and your first dose effect, you know, produce this even more significantly. So you have to make sure to talk to your patients about this. With lightheadedness, again, very, very vague, and you can't really pin it down to any of these kinds of things. Think about anxiety and depression. Think about your, you know, with your anxiety, think about your panic attacks and the hyperventilation and the lightheadedness that they that may cause. So when it comes to dizziness, this here, this is kind of how you're trying to break it down so that you can make it manageable. Again, whether you refer to a neurologist or whether or not you refer to ENT really is, or even a cardiologist, depends on which of these it ends up being. When it comes to subjective data, a lot of that's going to depend on your patient. You know, you're going to ask a younger person probably some different questions than you would ask an older person who's on a lot of medications and those sorts of things. But of course, the very first thing that you want to do is let the patient tell you what's going on and then try to define the category. You know, which does it sound like it most likely fits in. And of course, when it comes to this, you're always trying to rule out what's the most serious thing this could possibly be, and let's make sure it's not that. So, you know, duration is a huge thing to ask. Um, has this been going on six weeks, six months, six years, or when I turn my head, it lasts less than 30 seconds? You know, if that's the case, then it's probably BPPV. So that duration is extremely important. Uh, severity is, is very important, you know, is this something that just kind of bothers them, that happens often, that's really interfering with their life, is it so severe they're having nausea and vomiting, you know, get a, a good PQRST on this. And of course, you know, dizziness lots of times is a vestibular dysfunction, so you've always got to ask about hearing loss, and then that's going to lead you one way or another uh, with your differential. Past medical history, of course, is huge. You know, we've got to make sure that this is not the most serious thing that it could be. And we've got to make sure it's not a brain tumor. we got to make sure they're not having an MI, uh, make sure they're not having arrhythmia, you know, all those kinds of things you have to think about with past medical history. And then you always ask about recent infections. You know, could this possibly be an inner ear problem? So all of these things are extremely important to ask about. Alright, when it comes to objective data, I know you've heard me say this a thousand times, but your subjective data always guides your objective data. But when it comes to dizziness, there's some basic things that you always want to make sure that you do. You know, when they come in, go ahead and, you know, have your assistant get vital signs and do orthostatics. You know, maybe that's what it is and, and that's pretty easy to determine. If you find out that it's BPPV, then you can do the Dixie Hall Pike. Uh, maneuver and send them to physical therapy 
and they will do the Epley and there's a, a YouTube video that you can watch for that. Some sources say that you do it in primary care office. I really haven't seen that done. I've seen it mostly referred. Um, you always want to do a, a very good uh, head, uh, neck, ears, eyes, throat exam. You know, you look at your TMs, you do your hearing test. Uh, don't forget about uh, your Weber, etc. Uh, visual fields, you're looking for um, EOM, any kind of nystagmus, uh, neck pain, those sorts of things. You also need to do a very good cardiovascular exam. Heart rate, uh, rhythm, murmurs, breweries, especially make sure that they don't have that carotid brewing. Again, we're, we're worried about what's the worst that this could be. And you need to do an excellent neuro exam. You know, unless you do this, I don't know how you could ever let the patient walk out and not just, you know, worry that you've missed something. So cranial nerves, uh, gait, look for that as well. Look at their deep tendon reflexes, do their sensation, do their strength, make sure it's equal on both sides. Don't forget to do a Romberg, you need to do that as well, and pronator drift. So these are the, the main things that you absolutely need to do. And then if your subjective guides you in other directions, then you just will follow it as well. Your plan of care really is going to be driven by your subjective and objective data. And we talked about the things that you definitely want to make sure that you do. So you need to be really inclusive, but at the same time, you don't want to do a million dollar workup. There's a lot of things in dizziness that we do referrals for. If they have hearing loss with dizziness, we want to refer that to ENT. We want to do that really good cardiac exam, and if we find anything abnormal, then we want to refer that as well. And the same for neuro. You know, we do that neuro exam, and they're talking about dizziness, and then we find weakness on one side. Of course, that's a referral. Don't forget about, you know, your easy fixes. You know, see if they're dehydrated. Look for those sorts of things. See if they've been ill recently. Um, Look at orthostatics, you know, what are easy things? Are they started on a medication recently? Look for things that you can fix. Now we talked a little bit about migraines. You know, if it's a basilar or vestibular migraine, they can have some vertigo with that. Um, the big thing is you have to make sure you don't give triptans. So even if you do diagnose that it's a migraine, but they're having the vertigo, you want to still refer that to a neurologist to take care of those type of migraines. Um, some medications are appropriate where others would uh, be very damaging to the patient. So you have to be very careful. If you determine it is uh, benign uh, positional vertigo, then of course that's a referral to PT unless you decide that you want to do the Epley maneuver in your office. Um, I've never done that. I probably could look it up and try to figure it out, but I've always did, just done a referral uh, to PT. Follow up, especially if you give medications. Now, you may be out there where you see someone give a medication called meclizine, and that was a pretty common thing to give for a while. It's not ever shown to be effective in the long term. And if you do have something like BPPB, then it actually can be very detrimental to your patient. So lots of times what I see in primary care is lots of times someone will come in and ask for a refill because they're dizzy and they're like, I need this medicine that, that somebody gave me, this meclizine. Um, you know, you want to do your teaching then and say, well, this particular medication really hasn't shown to be um, all that effective in the long term. And, and maybe we should think about um, taking a look at you again. You know, let's, let's look at you. Let me listen to you. And, and, uh, and talk to you about you know where this dizziness is coming from and how it started and those sorts of things because even if they've been on the meclizine for a really long time and they do say that it helps you have to make sure that nothing's been missed you know so you still want to do your work up yourself because if you just refill that medication and, and send them on out without a really good check and if something's been missed then of course you know you're responsible uh, for that so this is just a, a diagnosis that can be very serious and that uh, you need to, you know, uh, dot all your 
eyes and all that stuff. So uh, just make sure that you, you do your good workups.